We got a new Zeals video before GTA 6. Everyone and their mothers made this video, and now you can add me to that list. We're ranking the Kotsky members. I am only doing the main 10 members we see in the story. So no Taka, no Orochimaru, no any other people really. And starting at number 10, we have Mr. Black and White, Mr. Michael Jackson, Zetsu. Zetsu is a very unique case within the Akatsuki as he is a solo operative, i.e. he has no partner and is not part of a team. He specializes and excels in stealthy infiltration, reconnaissance and information gathering. This is because of his ability to phase through solid objects. A good example of this is during the Five Kage Summit, where he successfully infiltrates the summit, which was attended by some of the strongest shinobi in the story at the time, including Ah with the Byakugan and a member of the Yamanaka clan. Beyond reconnaissance, he is also Pain's messenger. He's basically what Hermes is to Zeus, but to Pain. And that's kind of... Zetsu in a nutshell. He doesn't have the most insane combat abilities and that's why he's 10th on the list. As we saw in the war, the white parts of Zetsu are pretty fragile when hit with enough force. And then on top of that, Zetsu has two personalities which lead to internal conflicts and poor decision making within battles. In ninth place, we have one half of the zombie squad, Hidan. Hidan achieved a form of immortality through what is said to be religion, but we don't know if that's truly the case or not. Could be an innate ability that Hidan has. Hidan wields a triple-bladed scythe and is pretty good at it. He's also one of the most agile members of the Akatsuki. His main technique is basically him using his opponent's blood to turn himself into a human voodoo doll for his opponent and then stabbing the shit out of himself till his opponent dies, as we saw with Asuma. Rest in peace, big guy. As I said, he is extremely agile and he has great reflexes and pretty decent speed. Pair that with his very psychotic and dark personality and you have a pretty formidable opponent. But he is still ninth on the list because he is kind of a one-trick pony. He doesn't have any traditional ninjutsu that he can use, and he is pretty reliant on having Kakuzu as a partner. I think if Kakuzu was not present during the battle with Asuma, Hidan would have definitely lost, considering his head got chopped off. Also, I feel like Hidan is probably the only member of the Akatsuki that would have lost to Shikamaru. Even though that whole scene was sick as fuck, I think Hidan is pretty much the only guy that would have lost there. And maybe Zetsu. Is Zetsu smarter than Hidon? So not sure. But yeah, ninth place for Hidon. In eighth place, we have the youngest member of the Akatsuki, the maniacal art student, Deidara. Deidara had the explosion release, Keke Genkai, which gave him a variety of attacks. And let's take a look at them. His most commonly used attack was C1. Basically, this is when he molded creatures like birds and spiders, launched them at opponents, and blew them up. Next up is C2 Dragon. It's basically when he created a pretty large clay dragon that spewed C1 creatures out of its mouth instead of breathing fire like a normal dragon would. Next, we have C3, which is when Data creates a large statue out of explosive clay and basically sets off a pretty big explosion potentially big enough to wipe out an entire village. Next up is potentially his most popular attack, C4. This is when he creates a large clay version of himself that explodes and releases hundreds and thousands, probably millions of microscopic bombs that his opponent then inhales and gets destroyed on a cellular level. His opponent, that is. Unless it's Sasuke. For some reason, Sasuke had enough plot armor to protect himself from that attack. And then C0, its name, I don't know if I can say. Um, no, 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 no. If that's bleeped out, um, then I'll call it unalive yourself art. This is basically when Data turned himself into a bomb and blew himself up. 
with a cataclysmic explosion. That just means a really big explosion. Sorry for sounding pretentious. Now, those attacks were super powerful and they led to some pretty big feats. His best feat, in my opinion, is defeating and capturing Gara, the Jinchuriki of the One Tail. What makes it so impressive is that obviously Gara was a Jinchuriki, but he was also in the Hidden Sand Village, which basically gave him an unlimited amount of sand to fight Datara with, and somehow he still lost. I mean, he did have to protect the village, so it makes sense. But still, impressive feat for Datara. Another one is that he captured Isobu the Three Tails with relative ease. And then I know this is a loss on his official record, but the fight with Sasuke, he should have won. As I mentioned, Sasuke had insane plot armor that kept him alive. And I think that's a, a moral victory for Daedara. But there is a reason that Daedara is eighth, and those are down to some of his weaknesses. His reliance on long-range attacks can make him pretty vulnerable in close combat situations. His only real close combat attack that he has is his unalive yourself attack, which obviously just kills him and his opponent, so that's a stalemate. And a bigger weakness is he has a finite amount of clay, and once he runs out in his reservoir, he is way less effective in battle. In seventh place, we have... And this may be a contentious one. In seventh, we have Sorcery. Now, I wrote a really nice piece about Sorcery's backstory. And i um, too lazy to recite it. Or to try and remember it is going to take way too many tries. So I'm just going to read it to you. Sorcery's story within the... <coughs> Sorcery's story within the Okatsuki is one of the most tragic. Deprived of love and emotion since childhood due to the ravages of war. He navigates a lonely path. Losing his parents in the Third Great Ninja War leaves him isolated. Even abandoned by his grandmother Chio, Sasori's safe haven becomes the puppet workshop, where his experiments escalate to crafting human puppets from corpses, including his own parents. Okay, you got me. I had help with writing that. Sasori was also kind of immortal in the sense that by turning himself into a puppet, he eliminated human weaknesses. And he also had countless bodies that he could uh, possess by transferring his soul from puppet to puppet to puppet. Basically, he was immune to any traditional forms of harm that humans endure. Sasori's strongest puppet was probably the third Kazakage puppet, as he could use the third Kazakage's famed magnet release. He has way too many puppets for me to cover, like I did with Daedra's attacks. But basically, he had a puppet for any type of battle situation. He had offensive puppets. <laughs> Not like they were offensive, like they said slows and stuff. They were good for offense. He had puppets that were good for defense. Puppets that could poison. Puppets with blades. Puppets with projectiles. All sorts. And apart from his combat abilities and his mastery in wielding puppets as weapons, he also was very good at espionage and manipulation. And he basically had spies all over the world in different organizations and governments and villages working for him. And basically the way he did this was he used memory concealing manipulative sand technique. Memory concealing manipulative sand technique. That sucks to say. Basically how this works is he conceals someone's mind it makes them forget that they are working for him and that they're loyal to him and then they go on and do their thing go work their way up through the government somewhere or within an organization gather secrets and intel and then when he needs the information from them he just releases the technique and they're super loyal to him without forgetting what they've done and still maintaining their current job role i feel like there was a way more streamlined way to say all of that but you know what i mean an example of this is when they infiltrate the hidden sand village to capture gara he releases the technique on yura i want to say that's his name and then yura goes on to kill a bunch of sand village guards and data and sorcery stroll right into the village and you know what happens after that Sasori did have his own weaknesses, and that is why he is not higher up on the list. His over-reliance on puppets sometimes left him vulnerable in close combat situations, 
especially with a quicker opponent. And then his second weakness is once his opponents identified weaknesses within his puppets, they could pretty easily be destroyed like we saw against Sakura and Chio. But still, he is a very respectable seventh. In sixth place, we have somewhat of a hot take, I think. I think they're severely underrated and should have more of a limelight put on them. In sixth place, I have Conan. Conan is very much overshadowed by Nagato slash Pain. Like everyone else in the Akatsuki, she had a very traumatizing and depressing backstory. She grew up in the war-torn Hidden Rain Village, which was in between two major villages and basically a battleground for those two villages. From a young age, she used origami-style paper jutsu. This is very impressive because it wasn't passed down to her. It is a jutsu that she created herself, and it was extremely versatile. She could create paper shuriken, which were as hard as normal shuriken, but were cooler because she could control them remotely. She could also create paper doppelgangers, which was basically her version of clones that were made of paper. She also had the devastating paper person of God technique. It does need a better name, but it was still cool due to. This was the jutsu she used on Obito when she used roughly 600 billion explosive tags. Her main jutsu was Dance of the Shikigami. This is basically when she turned herself into lots of pieces of paper that could be used as explosive tags or she could use to shoot as projectiles that could pierce her opponents. But the coolest thing about it is it was immune to the Sharingan. Her camouflage was so good that not even Obito Sharingan could see it. And then she had some other abilities like insane regenerative abilities. She was also very skilled in tracking. She would send paper butterflies after people she was tracking. She could envelop her opponents in countless sheets of paper and choke them and suffocate them to death, basically in a paper coffin. And she is so underrated and that's why I have her in sixth. In fifth place, we have the other half of the zombie squad. The old man himself, Kakuzu. Kakuzu was once an elite ninja for the Hidden Waterfall, but his name and reputation was tarnished when he was sent to kill <laughs> Hashirama Senju, the god of Shinobi. Somehow, the village elders expected him to be able to pull off that insane feat and wanted to execute him when he failed. To defeat the strongest ninja we have ever seen apart from the main character and his rival. Fucking nuts. Kakuzu managed to escape this punishment and killed the village elders and went on his merry way to become a bounty hunter. But though he loves money, he also liked to pick up a little thing called human hearts. I know, kind of fucked. He was able to do this because of a technique called Earth Grudge, which basically meant his body was made of these tentacle-like things that allowed him or enabled him to steal and store up to five hearts. Each heart would increase his power level and his lifespan, and he could use whatever chakra nature and jutsu the person with that heart possessed. So by the time we see him in the show, he has a heart for water. Earth. Uh fire, wind, and lightning. Well, basically all five chakra natures. He could also use the masks on his back to basically turn each chakra nature into its own being that was attached to him. These beings were almost like puppets, but they were independent and more sentient. And they were strong, as we saw in the fight against Kakashi and Choji and Shikamaru and Ino. As cool as these beings were, they were also a bit of a weakness for Kakuzu because the masks were literally targets on his back. If someone destroyed one of the masks, he would lose a lot of his power. And also because his mask beings were attached to him like puppets almost, if someone was able to sever one of his tentacles or tendrils, the heart slash mask puppet thing would be lifeless and stagnant until he could reconnect with them. So we're very strong fifth place for Kakuzu. In fourth place, we have the tailless tailed beast, K-1. 
Kisame. Originally tasked with guarding the cipher core of the Hiramis village, Kisame had to make the very difficult decision to kill the cipher core to protect the very important information they had from getting into the Hidden Leaf's hands via Ibiki. I would have done the same thing. That is one scary man. After this, Kisame learned that his superior, Fuguki, had been selling information anywhere. The information that he tried so hard to protect and had to kill people he was close to to protect was just being sold to other villagers by his very own superior, which led to Kisame killing him too. By killing Fuguki, he also got his hands on Samehada, the sentient sword. With Samehada in hand, he acquired the title of the Monster of the Hidden Mist. Kisame encountered the mysterious figure of Madara Uchiha, who persuaded him to join the Akatsuki. And that's where he formed a very unlikely partnership and kind of friendship with Itachi Uchiha. Kisame has very impressive feats of strength and some of my favorite battles in the show. He had numerous battles with my guy that ended in stalemates, which is a very, very impressive feat. A 33% strength Kisame clone managed to push my guy to the seventh gate, which is one gate away from the night guy that scared the shit out of Madara temporarily. He also had a battle with Killer B that he would have won had the Raikage and his entourage not interfered. Killer B was the Jinjuruk of the Eight Tails, the second strongest tailed beast. So yeah, Kisum is pretty fucking strong. He had an insane chakra pool, hence the name, the Tailless Tailed Beast. This made him a very good companion for the chakra hungry Samehada. Samehada would only let people with huge chakra reserves wield it. People like Kisame and Killer B. And because of Samehada, Kisame also had the ability to drain chakra from his opponents. This was a very unfair ability considering the amount of chakra he already had. All this chakra he possessed and Samehada's thirst for chakra was kind of a weakness though. In the sense that it led to a longer charge time for Samehada. Which would leave Kisame a bit more vulnerable. Not much of a weakness when you've got someone that's strong. Hence why he's fourth. The, he is literally the best of the rest. The strongest guy that doesn't have some crazy doju 2 hacks, basically. In third place, I wonder who it could be. It's a fan favorite. It's Itachi Uchiha. I am not going to cover his backstory because everybody knows it. But a quick summary. He was a sick prodigy of a kid. And he became an Anbu member. He then had to slaughter his whole clan to stop them from rebelling against the leaf and causing all out war. And yeah, join the Akatsuki off the back of that. Itachi had some of the coolest feats ever. Some of the most insane feats. Let's take a look at them. Early on in the story, he faces Asuma and Kakashi in a 2v1. And it ended with Kakashi in the hospital for a prolonged period of time. And then there's Orochimaru. One of the craftiest and smartest and most evil people in the show that killed the third Hokage. Itachi defeated him twice. And then, obviously, his most famous battle, his battle with Sasuke, the fated battle between brothers. Itachi showed insane battle experience and awareness to push Sasuke to the point of exhaustion. That would thrust Orochimaru out of his body. That's just some of what he did. He also defeated Kabuto in Kabuto's Dragon Sage mode. He held off Kakashi and Naruto. Bro did a lot. Now let's look at his weaknesses and why I think he is not as strong as the other two Dojutsu users in the Akatsuki. Obviously, he was sick. There's always the question of a healthy Itachi. How strong is a healthy Itachi? Potentially number one on this list. But he wasn't healthy, and that's why he's third. Down to the final two. In second place, we have Mr. Rinnegan, Mr. Nagato. I already kind of covered his backstory when speaking about Conan. Now, basically, he was an orphan from the Hidden Rain Village. He was then trained by Jiraiya. He was one of the founding members of the Akatsuki with Conan and Yahiko. 
Things took a turn for the worse when Yakiko was killed in front of his very eyes and sent him down a dark path. And that's how he got the name Pain and changed his morals. And the Okotsuki became a completely different organization. He has limited but insane feats that we have seen. He managed to kill the legendary Sonin Jiraiya. And then his most insane feat is single-handedly destroying the Hidden Leaf Village and killing almost everybody within it. If it wasn't for Naruto's Tok no Jutsu, the story would have been done after that arc, after what he did to the Hidden Leaf. Let's take a look at his weaknesses and why I think he is ever so slightly second. Because he remotely controlled the six parts of pain and they weren't completely autonomous and independent if his link to them was severed it would leave them vulnerable just like kakuzu's mask puppet things and his second weakness and probably his biggest weakness is even though he wasn't uzumaki with an insane chakra pool using the renegon to control six parts of pain was very chakra intensive and left him susceptible to exhaustion and that's why i think he is a very very solid number two and finally number one and i'm sure you would have got this through process of elimination the forgotten uchiha obito uchiha we all know his backstory just like the others but in summary friendly uchiha gets squashed like a bug in a wall gives his best friend his last sharingan and then he is found by an old decrepit Madara Uchiha, nursed back to health, trained, turned into some sort of assassination machine. He witnesses the love of his life get brutally murdered by his best friend, and he rampages, wipes out an entire squadron of hidden Miss Shinobi, and that's just the beginning. He had immense power. He was able to control the nine tails and let it rampage on the Hidden Leaf Village. He held his own against the 4th Hokage, Minato, and even tanked a very powerful Rasengan in one of the sickest scenes ever. His mastery of Kamui left him virtually untouchable. Very few people figured out how it worked, Minato being one of the only few. He was one of the masterminds behind the assassination of the Uchiha clan and even helped Itachi achieve it. He put the third Mizukage under Genjutsu and basically turned the Hidden Mist Village into the Bloody Mist Village. And that was not even him at his strongest. We saw in the war arc, he became the Tentails Jinjuriki, got the nickname Jubito, and he had so much power and chakra when he was the Tentails Jinjuriki that he was a threat to the entire allied shinobi force. So yeah, there's a reason he's number one on this list. But like everyone else, we have to mention his weaknesses. Because of his lingering attachment to his past and all those who he lost, he was very emotionally vulnerable and that made him very easy to manipulate. Even though he did manipulation himself, like on the third Mizukage, he himself was being manipulated by Madara. And as we saw, he was basically a pawn for Madara and Madara sacrificed him without giving it a second thought. And then his second weakness was his reliance on Kamui because he was shifting between dimensions non-stop. It was taking a huge toll on his chakra reserves. Not as big of a toll as Kakashi using Kamui, because it was actually Obito Sharingan. But still, it left him pretty exhausted at points and pretty vulnerable. But that ain't going to stop him from being number one on the list. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know how long this is going to be after the edit, but it felt long to film and i feel like my chakra reserves are strained right now let me know your list in the comments and let me know where i fucked up i know i haven't asked this yet but please do subscribe and i'll see you guys next week